1952. More than 850 people work here to publish the bee that you find on your doorstep each day. They all take part in the complicated process that results in a newspaper that's different each day of each year. There's enough space in our building to cover nearly two downtown city blocks. This building contains over 200,000 square feet, and it's the third building to house the bee, founded by James McClatchy back in 1857. In our tour on film, you'll see how a newspaper is put together, from the advertising department to the finished product loaded onto delivery trucks for distribution to your home. Let's begin by exploring the advertising department, that segment of the bee that helps pay for the publication costs of your daily newspaper. For example, here we generate the revenue that pays for newsprint, ink, new equipment, salaries, and related items. As most newspapers have, the bee's advertising department is divided into three sections, retail display, classified advertising, and general advertising. In the retail display department, personnel responsible for ads from retail merchants must be capable of roughing ad layouts, they must write copy, assist in budgeting the client's dollars, and even advise clients on special advertising campaigns during peak sales periods, such as holidays and special sales events and promotions. The second department, classified advertising, is divided into outside and inside or telephone sales. The sales staff outside calls on real estate firms, auto dealers, recreational vehicle, and mobile home dealerships and similar accounts. Here in the phone room, over 30 salespersons telephone accounts and receive ads by phone from customers who would like to sell items such as cars, boats, and similar items, or even to advertise their yard sale. Subscribers may want to buy a particular item, so they call classified ads for that purpose also. Classified advertising, then, is the want ad section of your newspaper. And finally, the third department is general advertising. Here, we deal mainly with the advertising of national major brand name products, or those ads that come to us from outside the bee's primary 19 county distribution area. After information for an ad has been obtained, it's necessary to lay out the ad in rough form for tentative approval by the client. So we call this department the ad layout department. It's used by the staff of all three advertising departments you visited, retail, classified, and general. Here, rough artwork is put together to assist in making up the finished, polished ad. The personnel specialize in taking an advertiser's idea and designing an entire ad in completed form. Only copy and prices need to be filled in by our sales representative and the client. The makeup department coordinates the available space for each edition for each paper between the advertising departments and the editorial department. The dummy is used as a guide for the paste-up department when pasting down the elements onto the grid sheet. Now, as the ad departments sell ad space, these men position the ads throughout the paper. Having determined the total inches of ad space for a given day, they will deliver copies of the dummies to the editorial department with a total number of inches that will be made available for news stories. Without the careful calculations of the makeup desk, Attempting to prepare a daily newspaper would be extremely confused at best. The hub of the advertising production cycle is the service department. Here, printing material for ads is ordered, Velox copies of ads for use in other publications is ordered also, and confirming dates for the run of the ad is obtained. In addition, the service department also processes up to 4,000 papers weekly to be given each advertiser so he may see his ad in print. In short, the service department does the legwork and the paperwork necessary to process an ad until it hits the presses. In preparing an ad campaign, the marketing department is often employed. Marketing converts important information and statistical data into what is known as a shopper's profile, containing information on the type of shopper who may be tempted by a particular ad campaign to shop from the advertisement found in the newspaper. Hence, the client will know just the type shopper to appeal to in his advertising, and indeed, even the kind of artwork to use. From this information, in-store cards may be printed, 
mailers designed, and other promotional materials constructed to appeal to one or more segments of the population covered by the advertising campaign. What happens once an advertiser agrees to use the B for his ad and copy is ready to be printed? IBM's electric typewriters are used to type copy for both the advertising and the editorial copy on specially treated paper. Later, you'll see the paper being fed into a scanning machine which produces a six-level paper tape that drives a computer producing copy on a printed readout. It's a far cry from the old hot metal method of printing on machines like this that permitted only 14 lines per man per minute to set. With the new cold type method, we now set from 75 to 150 lines per minute. 75 lines of mixed type, 150 lines of fixed type. Our ad now goes to the composing room. Here, various divisions are incorporated to further the printing process. Included here is the TXT room, the paste-up department, nap plate making department, and the camera department. In addition, the composing room includes both advertising copy and news story copy. For advertisements, copy has been typed on the IBM Selectric typewriter you just saw, then it's run through the CompuScan, or the optical character reader. Now this machine reads the typed copy at 120 letters or numbers each second, some 7,200 per minute. The scanner produces that six-level tape we mentioned earlier. Also, ad information is given to a man operating a TTS perforator that produces a coded tape. Now, both the tape from the scanner and the tape from the TTS perforator are fed into still another machine called the Harris 2200 video terminal. And this machine produces another final tape that enters the printing process itself. The Harris 2200 displays copy on a TV screen after the operator feeds the size of the ad into the machine using the ad layout as a guide. The 2200 then provides the correct size of type required and the type styles to be used in the advertisement. If the type desired is too large for the size of the ad, a light flashes and the operator makes the necessary adjustment. Once all is A-OK, -okay, the operator simply pushes a button and a new tape is produced that contains all the correct commands for our computer, the Harris Phototronic TXT. The tape from the 2200 is fed into our TXT, the heart of the typesetting system. Gone is the day of typesetting by hand at the B. Here, Five plastic discs with two typefaces each, one per side, responds to the commands from the 2200 tape. These discs spin at some 2,400 rotations per minute. Now, if the tape, for example, asks for a capital A in 36-point Badani, that's what the plastic disc receives, faster than the human eye can blink. A strobe light shines through the letter, a servo unit, and a series of lens. The letter A is photographed, and printed on positive photographic paper, and the type is set. This is the machine capable of setting 75 lines of mixed type or 150 lines of same type per minute that was mentioned previously. The copy produced almost instantaneously by our TXT machine you just saw in action now moves on to the paste-up department. This copy plus art illustrations from the camera department are used by a compositor called that because they compose an advertisement. Using the original layout as a blueprint, the compositor prepares the ad on a page-sized grid sheet along with the daily editorial copy that's been produced by the punched tape fed into the 2414 video setter. The combined elements of news stories and advertisements make up the completed pages of your newspaper. As soon as all of the elements have been placed onto the grid sheet, it's delivered, usually by a person from the service department, to the camera department. Here, the operator affixes the grid sheet to the camera, makes the proper adjustments to get the correct exposure, and produces a full-page-sized negative, which is then delivered to the plate-making department. The B is printed on a nap plate. This is a plate coated with polymer coating on thin metal. The notches in the plate match the full-page-sized negatives from the camera department. The negative and the plate are now placed on a printer and exposed to an ultraviolet light for 80 seconds. The light hardens the polymer in the exposed areas. Now the negative is removed and the plate travels along a conveyor belt 
through a five-minute bath in 140-degree water under pressure. Now, this bath washes away the remaining soft areas of the coating, leaving only the hard, raised surface coating for printing. The plate is then placed in a device that crimps them so they may be installed on printing presses. In the press room, the plate is installed and ink is fed into the printer fountains and the press is ready for webbing or threading through the printing machine. Webbing takes place in the reel room where huge reels of paper wait to be fed into the printers above. Each day, reels of newsprint paper are fed into the press in a different manner depending on the number of pages to be printed in that day's newspaper. A 1,600-pound roll of newsprint is used about every 18 minutes when the presses are running. Rolls are changed without stopping the presses. As the top reel feeding the printing presses is used up, the bottom reel begins rotating faster and faster until its speed matches that of the diminishing reel above. Then, at the precise moment, a highly experienced operator breaks the web and feeds the press the new roll of paper. An operator must be highly skilled to perform this delicate movement. Just a moment's hesitation would cause expensive delay in producing that day's edition. The Sacramento Bee is printed on three eight-unit rotary presses, costing more than three million dollars. Forty-five thousand newspapers may be printed hourly, 175,000 daily, and about 210,000 Sunday newspapers. The presses use an average of 100 rolls of paper daily and some 300 gallons of black ink. Our presses print two editions each day, the Blue Star edition and the popular Final edition. These are delivered by our Sacramento Bee fleet of trucks traveling more than three million combined total miles per year to nearly 2,000 carriers delivering the bee to Sacramento area homes. Almost all artwork is performed here in the Central Art Department. Three full-time skilled photo retouchers process every photo published in the bee. Other artists do cartooning, illustrations, fashions, lettering, and even picture layouts for the editorial department. No comics are drawn here, however, because they're supplied us by newspaper feature syndications in other cities. This is the newsroom. Glorified in movies and on TV, recreated on stage and romanticized in books. Not quite as one has been led to believe. There's no one screaming, stop the presses, but exciting, nevertheless. The newsroom may be compared to a giant magnet attracting news from all over the world. Some 155 persons make up this department, including assistant editors and managing editor responsible for the smooth, efficient handling of local, state, national and world news. Every facet of news sources is covered from the police beat to TV, from business and finance to sports, from the state capital to Washington DC, from agriculture to real estate and more. The assistant editors and managing editor are not only friends but are hard workers whose combined efforts help in publishing our daily newspaper. Their editorial staff meeting of the day begins at 4.30 p.m with the express purpose of reviewing some 16 to 20 pages that will be printed that day. They must decide how much space may be devoted to special features, the headline story of the day, and how much area may be held for last minute late breaking news. Dummy sheets provided by the makeup desk are used by the editors as guidelines to help them determine how much space remains to be filled, where news holes remain, and how the paper will look when published. Stories may be rewritten and edited in order to make them fit exactly the remaining news spaces available. Once the editors decide on these issues, copy is written and then checked by a copy reader. The copy readers read every piece of copy before it's published. They check stories for accuracy, grammar, and spelling. And with the help of a machine called a care account, the copy reader also helps write story headlines. The care account shown here indicates just how many letters or numbers will fit a given space available for a headline. Once copy readers have completed their duties, copy then advances to the composing room, which we saw previously. Locally, reporters and photographers cover news events of all kinds, from sporting events to dog shows to accidents and more. But where do we get our state, 
national and world news and pictures published daily. The wire services offer a major source of news. Here are machines of the Associated Press, United Press International, the New York Times, and the LA Times Washington Post news services. These wire service machines run almost continuously, and they type from 60 to 1,260 words per minute. Pictures are received for other than local events on wire photo machines. This UPI wire photo machine generates a series of dots on specially treated paper. The dots may be from black to stages of gray to form a picture with tones, reflections, and shadowing occurring merely by the use of light or dark dots. The Associated Press photo machine employs a laser beam. The beam is flashed at a high rate of speed onto photosensitive paper to create the picture you later see in the B. A photo editor selects photos to be used in varying sizes determined by the space available. The black and white photo department is yet another source of pictures for the B. The chief photographer makes assignments for his staff. Often a reporter photographer team goes out on a story or feature. However, not all photos are taken on the day of publication. So the chief photographer must often plan far in advance to shoot pertinent pictures. We've nearly all heard about the morgue at a newspaper. This is the morgue, a term heard nowadays mostly on TV or in movies about newspapers. It is actually a reference library or editorial library where so-called dead news stories are filed, hence the term morgue. It provides background material for a reporter who may want to add information to his story subject. For example, a reporter doing an article on the anniversary of President Kennedy's assassination may come to the editorial library and go through clippings on JFK's life for interesting information to enhance his article. In the library, personnel cut up each issue of the B, paste each story on file cards, annotate each, and then file them for future use. In addition, each complete issue of the bee is microfilmed, dating back to the very first issue published on the 3rd of February in 1857. What you see here is the actual first Sacramento Bee front page. We've seen ads being put together. We've watched as news was written and duplicated. We've seen the coordination of the makeup desks, blueprints or dummies, full pages of copy from camera negative to press plate. Now the ink is being fed into the black and white or color fountains. The newsprint from the real room has been webbed, threaded, through the presses. And the presses are finally rolling out our 45,000 newspapers per hour. We've come a long way since Gutenberg or Ben Franklin and his printing press. Once printed, the newspaper is cut and folded in proper sections and continues by conveyor from the press room to the circulation mail room. The first stop is the counter stacker that does just that. It counts and stacks bundles of 25 and 50 papers. Next stop, the bundle tighter that ties automatically with plastic ribbon. These bundles are now ready for loading on delivery trucks for distribution to bundle spotters who in turn make the delivery to nearly 2,000 carriers in the Sacramento area alone. One of the most interesting machines to watch in the bee's circulation mail room is the insertion machine. As the name implies, the insertion machine inserts advertising sections into completed printed newspapers. These are entire sections, often smaller than newspaper size, that one or several clients may choose to advertise their products. Some of these inserts are printed at the B, and some come from other sources and are simply inserted into the paper. Often several insertions will be made into each newspaper, such as the Sunday edition, which generally has more than one. It's the circulation department that's responsible for the bee reaching our doors at home and newsstands as well. It's a vital department that's also responsible for gaining additional delivery subscriptions. All departments that make up the Sacramento Bee are vital to its overall operation. Each dovetails with the other. Eliminate any one of these important operations and it is difficult, if not impossible, to turn out a newspaper every day with quality and professionalism. Nearly every segment of life in these United States is depicted in our daily newspapers. From the high and the mighty to the man on the street, your newspaper serves as one of our most important elements. Our editorial product, 
complemented by the creativity employed in our advertising copy and layout, offers our reader a total package. The Sacramento Bee, designed to entertain, inform, and satisfy.